Hey guys, welcome back to this is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you a technique for finding logic errors in your programs, right? And these are the toughest types of defects or bugs or errors that you're going to have um, because your code runs, but it just doesn't do what you want it to do, or maybe halfway through while your program's running, it crashes. Um, you know, it's it's not something relatively easy to fix like a syntax error, right? It, th these are kinds of errors that the compiler doesn't catch, okay? And so logic error is definitely the worst type. And so by doing or applying this technique, this will hopefully help you to find what's going wrong with your code or where your code is um, broken, right? Where you have some logic problem with the logic in your code. Okay, so with this technique, this is kind of old school. It's kind of primitive, stone knives and bear skins kind of thing. Um, but it's a really, really, really important skill for you to have. You must, must have this skill. Um, you have to be able to read code and understand what it's doing. Okay, and um, this is a technique to help you understand it. So with this technique, your brain is the computer. Okay, your brain is the computer, the code's the code and use a piece of paper, whiteboard, you know, something to um, represent your memory, okay, for your computer. And so you use your brain to go through each line of code, updating your piece of paper, in other words, updating your memory as you go along. And by understanding what's happening in memory through this technique, that oftentimes leads you to finding what went wrong, okay? Um, so, like I said, this is a skill you have to have. Can't tell you how many times I've had seniors come to my class and, you know, or juniors, and they, they're like, I don't understand why my code doesn't work. I'm like, well, what did you find when you traced it? And then I get this blank stare, you know, what are you talking about? I don't know what you mean, right? Because never learned how to do it. Never learned how to debug their own code, right? And so it's really, 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 really crucial that you know how to debug your own code. If you graduate from a university or from a computer, with a computer science degree, and you don't know how to debug your own code, chances are you cheated to get your degree. Um, and if you didn't cheat, then your, your degree is, I don't want to say worthless, but it's not as worth as much as it should be because by the time you graduate, you should know how to debug your code. Um, but here's another thing that this technique allows you to do. This allows you to understand other people's code as well, right? So programs other people have written and you're not exactly sure what their code's doing. Um, you can, or sample code in the textbook, okay? You can apply this technique and really understand what's happening. But even further, even maybe even more important, um, you know, computer science is all about studying algorithms, coming up with algorithms to solve problems or whatnot. If you're studying an algorithm, you're, you're not exactly sure what's going on. I mean, just looking at words on a page, is just words on a page. If you start interacting with the words on a page, suddenly it becomes more real, suddenly it becomes, you know, something that makes sense. And so hand tracing can be used with pseudocode as well. Okay, so, you know, I'll, I'll have a, a simple snippet of code that has a simple defect in it. You might even be able to see it, you know, by inspection. But we'll still walk through the process uh, just to give you a feel for how this works. All right, so let's, uh, let's get started. All right, guys, so let's do this. So on the left-hand side right here, I've got a simple program that is trying to find the average of three numbers, okay? So, you know, it's gonna ask the user for three numbers, it's gonna do the math on that, and, um, you know, show the user what the average is. Just something really simple, okay? So, that's the program. And on this side over here is my memory, okay? So I'm drawing with my mouse because my pen's on the fritz here, so bear with me, it's gonna look a little gross when I write over here, but, so, my brain becomes the CPU, right? And, um, you know, this grid over here, or if it was just a regular old piece of paper or blackboard or whiteboard or whatever, that's where you're gonna write your memory down, okay? And so what you do is, is you go through and you read each line of code and then you update your memory, okay? And then at some point, you know, hopefully it becomes obvious uh, where the problem is. Now, here's another thing too, right? If you really wanna, make sure that you understand what the code is doing, right? If you really wanna understand 
you know, or double check that you understand, you know, what's, how does division work or what does this statement mean? Well, this is a good way of doing it too, because if you can't translate any of these lines of code, then you don't, you didn't learn what they do, right? And so that's a good key or a good cue for you to go back into, you know, your textbook, for example, and, um, you know, reread that section that has to do with, say, you know, multiplication or division or arithmetic, right? Say, for the, with this line right here, like if you stare at it and you can't figure out what's going on or what it's doing, then go back and review that section of the textbook that covers that. Okay, but anyway, so let's let's go through this, right? So this first, okay, so for, if my brain is the computer, okay, then um, my brain looks at this first statement and says, oh, okay, well, let's go ahead and declare these four variables, okay? Um, so what's in those variables after this statement executes? I don't know, right? Um, garbage, right? The correct answer is not nothing because there's no such thing as an empty variable, right? There's going to be something there. You just might not have put it there. Whatever happened to be in that memory location when the operating system started running your program is what's going to be in those memory locations. Okay, but anyway, so that's the first line. So what's in those variables right now? I don't know, right? Um, so the next line executes. And so what would we see on the screen or the first number? Okay, so that doesn't impact my memory at all. So I'll just go to the next line. And so this line right here says uh, CN num1, right? And so I know what this is doing is this is reading input from the user. Okay, so now if you didn't know what this line meant, well, then that would cue you in again. Go back to that section of the textbook, reread, you know, the part on CN, the CN object, for example. But anyway, so let's say that the user typed in 10, okay? How would my memory change? Well, 10 would have to go into the num1 spot, right? But it's not just 10 because what data type is num1? It's a double. So it's actually 10.0, right? It's a floating point number. Okay, so then the next line happens. Enter the second number. That goes on the screen. Doesn't impact my memory, so I'm just going to move to the next line. See in num2, right? So let's say that the user typed in 20 for that. Okay, well, how does my memory change there? Well, we now know that 20 stored there okay 20.0 because the data type is a double for num2 also next line enter the third number user types in 30 okay 30.0 and that gets stored because num3 is a double also and so then we get down to this line right here okay now when i run my program it shows me that the answer is, and this is why I'm going through the hand tracing, right? Because I got the wrong answer. This program would show me that the uh, average is um, 40, right? That's the output, which is incorrect, right? Because the average of 60, you know, divided, you know, 10 plus 20 plus 30, 60 divided by three, that should be, that should be 20. But instead it's showing me 40, so why? Well, let's take a look at this, right? Now, Consider your order of operations. Right? My order of operations says that division goes first, right? So what's in num three right now? Thirty. Well, then this goes first. Thirty divided by three is what? Ten. Okay. So now what's in num one and num two and uh, those two variables, right? What is in there? Well, twenty and ten. Okay. Now what do you do? Add them all up. So what does that equal? Forty. So it goes into average. 40, right? And so then what do we see on the screen? The average is 40. So that's the problem. So what was the last what was the last line that changed um, the average variable? This one right here. So that's where I would look for my problem, right? So I know that that should result in 20 because 60 divided by three is 20. It should not be resulting in 40, right? So this, this right here appears to be my problem. So I stare at that and I stare at that and I stare at that. You know, if I couldn't figure it out, I'd go back to the textbook section on arithmetic and I'd, I'd see if there was anything that I missed. But I stare at it and I stare at it and stare at it and hopefully you have an aha moment. And my aha moment here is, oh, the order of operations is broken, right? You divide the sum by three. That's what you're supposed to do. So what's what should my fix be? Well, my fix, should be the change the order of operations. So I'd rewrite this code, put parentheses around there, 
and then run it again and see if that fixed it. And if it did, which it would, problem solved, right? So that's it, really. Um, it's, it's, it's profoundly simple, right? But profoundly powerful, okay? If you can do this, then you understand memory or what's going on in memory. And writing computer programs is all about managing memory. So you have to be able to go through and say, okay, well, how is my memory changing? Um, what line of code changed my memory last? Um, you know, what caused the value in a particular memory location um, to be incorrect and that sort of thing, right? What's the machine or what's the mechanic that's causing it um, to break, right? Uh, and you can go from there and understand exactly what's happening. So by tracing through this also, you know, we were able to figure out, well, how does this code actually work? Well, let's ask a user for some numbers and then it's finding an average and then it's displaying an average. So you can kind of reverse engineer or come up with an algorithm, right? So step one, you know, enter the first number, step two, enter the second number, step three, enter the third number, step four, add the three numbers together and divide by three, step five, uh, display the answer. So, you know, it, it helps you find those logic errors, helps you to better understand the code, helps you to check yourself to make sure that you understand the code, right? I mean, if there's any line that you look at and you're like, I'm not sure how that impacts memory or how that impacts my program. Well, that cues you in to go back to review, um, documentation, textbook, you know, the, your source material that covers, or that shows you how to use that line of code, right? Um, yeah, so I mean, that's it. And it's, it's a skill that you must, 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 must have. If you're learning to program, if you're a computer science major, doesn't matter what language, um, you're going to do this, right? This skill is going to come in handy. And I'll also point out some of you will be like, no, nah, I'm going to use the debugger program. I'm not going to do this. This is crazy. I'm not writing on paper. How do you think the debugger program works? What do you think it does? It does this in an automated way, right? So if you don't know how this works, you're not going to know how a debugger works. Okay. Or be able to use a debugger program. So anyway, um, there you go. Hand tracing your program. Okay, so that's going to bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.